Okay, this is lesson seven in my series of piano tutorials for absolute beginners. Up until now, we've covered a ton of ground. We know the basics of reading left and right hand. We figured out how rests work. And in the previous tutorial, we even came across our first black note in the form of F sharp when we were looking at the scale of G major. Up until now, we've dealt with three different note lengths. The shortest and most common is the crotchet or quarter note, which in 4-4 or 3-4 time occupies a single beat of the bar. Then we've looked at the half note or minim, which is twice as long as the quarter note, okay, and then at the whole note or semi-brief, which is twice the length of the minim and equal to four crotchets. So crotchet, minim, semi-brief, quarter note, half note, whole note. Today we're going to be heading in the other direction and looking at a note that's shorter than a crotchet. Let me show you what I mean. Let's start by counting a steady four beat bar like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let me play a little tune against that beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can probably hear it's a, it's a variation of that all time classic, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Now, did you see what was happening? Say in that first bar, the beat was going one, two, three, four, and the notes were going. Okay, as you can see, what we've got is two equal notes on each beat. We had eight notes in that bar, but only four beats. So what we were doing was dividing each beat into two. That is a really important concept in music, as well as having longer notes like minims and semi briefs that cover two or more beats, we can divide beats up into shorter notes. Now, the shorter notes that I was playing in the right there were quavers or eighth notes. Yeah, so quaver is the UK terminology, eighth notes is the US, but the, the, the international terminology. As you might imagine, a quaver, an eighth note, is exactly half the length of a quarter note or crotchet, okay? Now, they're written, as you can see, the same way as crotchet, so a black note head with a stem, yeah? But there's a little tail that comes off the end of the stem. Yeah, if the stem is pointing upwards, then the tail goes out on the opposite side from the note. Yeah, but if you've got a stem that's pointing downwards like that, then the, um, uh, the, then the tail comes in on the same side as the note. Okay, when music is printed or produced in an application like this in Sibelius, a, a music uh, a scoring program, then the tail tends to be kind of a fancy wavy one like the one we've got here. But if you're just handwriting it, you would just write it as a little sort of straight line coming off the stem. Now, here's a really important thing. When we get um, quavers together like this, let's put a bunch of quavers together here. Start to go up the scale. There we go. You can see that we get this effect. The um, Sibelius here, the application is doing it for me, but we're getting what we call beaming. Okay, so the quavers use their little t lose their little tails and they start uh, joining together using beams like this. Now, there are quite a few kind of rules and guidelines about how we beam quavers. The general idea is to make them more readable, yeah? I won't go into them here, but very broadly, quavers get beamed into groups of beats. Now, in 4-4 time, you would usually beam a whole bar of quavers like this, yeah? With a break between beats 2 and 3. So these two are on beat 1, these two are on beat 2, and beat 3, and then beat 4. Okay, um, if you have mixed notes, say for example uh, that this uh, this D here became a crotchet, then you know you get a, you, you get an effect like this where we've got these four beamed, then the crotchet, and then these two beamed. Okay, so we're preserving that break down the middle of the bar, and we're we're showing it, to some extent the kind of uh, the subdivision of the beats in the bar. The, kind of the big piece of advice here is uh, don't get too hung up on beaming. People who are learning are often like, oh, why is that beamed there? Why is that beamed there? So on and so forth. Um, 
The way quavers are joined together or not doesn't at all affect the way the music is played. It's all about making and managing the layout and as I said about making the music clear and readable, yeah? So all you need to understand for now is um, you know, whether a, a quaver looks like this or like this, it's still a quaver. It's an eighth note, it's half the length of a crotchet. Okay, so let's have a look at a piece of music with quavers, eighth notes, in it. I'm going to be using a kind of adaptation of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, kind of similar to what we listened to a minute or two ago, okay? One that uses quavers in the right hand. I've kind of pinched this idea from Mozart, yeah, who when he was 20 wrote a set of variations. That, that That's a group of pieces of music that play around with a particular tune on Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or to use the French name he knew it by, à vous dire je maman, okay? So go and have a look on YouTube, just search, you know, Mozart Twinkle Twinkle or à vous dire je maman or whatever, and you will find it. Um, I've kind of borrowed the right hand or an ad adaptation of the right hand from the first part of the set of variations, the statement of the theme. I've taken out a couple of sort of Mozart's twiddles and fancy bits, but overall it's pretty much as Mozart wrote it, at least in the, in the right hand. I've, I've kind of simplified the left hand. You'll find the score in this lesson in this lesson's accompanying PDF, which, as usual, you can download using the link underneath this video. Okay, so let's play it through. First of all, with the music up on the screen, so you can uh, you can follow the score. Here we go. Okay, now let's uh, take the music away so you can see what my hands are doing. As you can see, when I've got a crotchet in the left, I'm playing two quavers against it. <coughs> Excuse me. And when I've got a minim, I'm playing four quavers against it. Getting used to playing subdivisions of beats can be quite tricky at first, as you can't count them in the way you can count notes that occupy whole beats or multiple beats. Now, a common way to get around that with eighth notes, with um, uh, qu quavers at least, is to use the word and dropped in after a regular beat count, like this. One and two and three and four and, and, and so on, yeah? So your first homework task for this week is to learn this piece and practice counting those quavers, those eighth notes. As usual, have a go at right hand and left hand separately first and then put them together and start slowly. It's really important to be regular and precise. So, you know, don't steam through the easy bits and slow down for the tough bits. Build up gradually and focus on the parts that give you trouble. And don't ignore the dynamic markings either. Yeah, so listen to yourself, keep it musical and pay attention to all that stuff. I've actually, I've got, <coughs> excuse me, I've kind of put one or two little traps in here for you, especially with the fingering. So there's a little bit of jumping around. There's quite a little bit of fingers crossing over one another, yeah? So I do pay attention to what you're doing and do, as I say, m make sure you've got each hand worked out separately first before you put them together. Okay, so hopefully that's given you something to get your teeth into. Before we wrap up this tutorial though, I just want to cover a little extra music theory and introduce a couple of new concepts, neither of which are very tricky, but both of which are really important. Now, in the previous tutorial in the series, we looked at the scale of G major, which you might remember contains an F sharp, black note. 
In the accompanying PDF, which I've got up on the screen here, where I scored the scale out, I marked the F sharps using sharp signs like this in front of every F. So both in the, the treble for the right hand and the bass for the left hand. Okay. Remember, by the way, that in a musical context, we always call them sharp signs. They're never hashes, they're never pound signs. Now, when I did that, I was using the sharp sign in each case as an accidental. Accidentals are really, really handy. They are little, um, little kind of symbols that stick to the front of notes and tell us that we are changing that note in some way. And they almost always mean that we are moving the note up a little bit or down a little bit, okay? So the sharp sign always means that we are moving the note up by one single note, by one semitone up to the very, very next note on the piano keyboard, whether that is black or white, okay? So here we've got it on the F, and the sharp sign means, in, look, instead of playing the F natural, the white note, play the F sharp, the black note that's immediately above it on the piano keyboard. If the sharp accidental was on a C, it would mean instead of playing the white note, the regular C, play the very next note up on the piano keyboard, which is the black note, the C sharp, okay? Now, an important thing to remember about accidentals is that they stay in force to the end of the bar that contains them, yeah? So if this D was a D sharp and there were other Ds in the bar, they would also be sharp, but they wouldn't necessarily have to be marked as sharps, okay? Because the sharp stays in force. Let's look at it in, um, in, in kind of isolation. Just ignore the little green line there, that's the playhead. Here we've got two bars and four Fs, and this F at the start is sharpened, okay, by that F sharp sign. That means that this F is also sharp because that sharp sign stays in force, okay? But then it's cancelled by the bar line and instead it becomes F natural. And this accidental is a natural sign. Yeah, it, it means just play the regular note that's scored. That natural sign doesn't need to be there, okay? It's what we call a courtesy accidental that I've put in and that composers will usually put in, but not always, you can't absolutely depend on it, just to remind you that the accidental has lost its, for lost its force. But this note here, this F, is definitely an F sharp because this accidental, the F sharp, is still in force, okay? So accidentals always last to the end of the bar that contains them. So if you get an F sharp at the start of the bar, Every other F in that bar is also played an, as an F sharp, unless you're told otherwise, okay? So if I'd done that, then we'd know, okay, yeah, cool, we're back to F natural, yeah? So with that in mind, I've put together an exercise that you'll find in this month's PDF. Again, look for that using the link underneath the video. Now, the exercise is just some little snippets of score that contain accidentals, and I'd like you to play them through. What I want you to do as you play them through is make sure you're getting the notes right. Figure out which notes are sharp and which notes are natural. I've even included the answers, yeah, so you can kind of check out that you've got them right. Okay, as I said, practice the little piece we worked on, the Twinkle Twinkle, with its quavers, and also your scales of C major and of G major, both hands, and keep plugging away to at the pieces that we've looked at, uh, looked at over the past two or three tutorials until you're really comfortable with them. In the next tutorial, we're going to be kind of having a, a doing some consolidation, yeah, and, and working on a piece that uses all of the um, all of the techniques that we've learned so far, so we can kind of firm up our knowledge. That's it for this tutorial. As ever, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Just uh, you know, click the um, click the little red button in the bottom right of the screen there. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, uh, that would be really handy. And if you want to support what I'm doing here to the tune of just, you know, two or three dollars a month, please do check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash Bill Hilton. Okay, so get practicing and I will see you next time.